They say that the longest journey you will ever take is the journey from your head to your heart. Of course, we get a little confused when we start talking about head as one thing and heart as another. And so let's just visualize for a moment that the universe is heart. Let's drink in that Mayan prayer. May the universe, may the heart of the universe be in your heart. God is a circle whose circumference is everywhere, whose center is everywhere. God is a circle whose center is everywhere, whose circumference can never be found. So we are in the heart of the universe, each one of us. And that is the aperture of perception. That space within the heart is the perceptor of the heart of the universe. That's the place we look from. We talk in many of the spiritual traditions about the mirror of the heart. What's on the mirror of your heart as you look into your heart? How deep can you go into that mirror? Is the surface of the mirror clouded? Is it full of spiraling emotions and thoughts and feelings? rage, anger, despair. What's there on the surface of the mirror and how do you go deep into the heart of the reality of the realities? That is the work of the sacred activist, to go so deep into that mirror that they see reflected the whole, the wholeness of being, not just inside the individual, but that wholeness of shared being that we experience together, that wholeness of being in creation itself, the feast of being in all life, the feast of being in the universe itself, in the galaxies upon galaxies. Sir Roger Penrose has recently said, you know, uh, it does appear that uh, this universe may have been preceded by another universe. What a jolly interesting idea that is. That in fact, the extent of being precedes any known version of the Hollywood science called the Big Bang. And yet, in our hearts is a perceptor of that reality. So sacred activism begins in that deep place. And part of the mirror we have to clear is that movement from knee-jerk, reactive, finger-pointing, proselytizing, projecting, and judgmental forms of action. I've been there. <laughs> I've been very good at pointing the finger, at seeing the problem out there. I have been so outraged and so disturbed by what I saw that my heart could not bear, could not stand the velocity of that vision. And it pushed back and it said, stop them, get them, prison them, stop the human rights abusers, stop the exporters of weapons and war. I still say that, by the way, <laughs> but from a different place. So I understand this is not judgmental when I say knee-jerk reactive. It's a place that we can be in. Judgmental 
looking down upon, separating yourself from the problem, saying, it's there, I'm here, I'm right, you're wrong, clean it up. The movement from that to a contemplative form of action, to a form of action that breathes in a dialogic space for others. You see, if your truth is so clear to you, so lined up, I call it rigor mortis of the truth, <laughs> because all of your dots line up and there's no space between your dots and other people's dots for their truth to breathe with your truth. So we need that space in truth. That's a contemplative space. It's a space that feels into the silence, the fact that the universe is in fact a dialogic space. It's a space of opening for multiplicity, for your truth to move and shape with my truth, for your truth to help truth to help shape my truth. The dance of truth can only be experienced in a more contemplative space, in a space that breathes in rest and repose and starts to clear that mirror and move down deeper into the mirror of being and see that underneath is some form of loving dialogic presence. And that the universe itself is a listening space. We talk about frequencies of the brain. We're so absorbed in the new science these days because we see that things are resonant. They have frequencies, they pulse. Our own planet is said to pulse at these human frequencies which are exactly the frequencies you emit when you are in a state of deep listening. Deep listening is extraordinarily profound. When you listen in a deep way to another being, you start to change the electromagnetic field of that person. You start to change their biophysiology. You bring their amygdala, that excited place that says, no, there's danger, they're going to hurt me, into repose. So as you go into the mirror, you see that the universe is listening, is listening to you, is calling you, beckoning you. What, my dear beloved, do you wish to say? If you ever want to try to save your life in a very dangerous situation, go into a listening mode. Marshall Rosenberg, in nonviolent communication, says, the most pivotal question is to ask somebody who's threatening you, what do you need me to understand? And move your ear. What do you need me to understand? You who are blowing yourself up, you who are killing other people by blowing your body up, What do you need us to understand? Talk to us. Listen. We're here to listen. Let's communicate. Let's create this field of resonance. This is a modality of activism that is going to move us forward. It is not that place of reactivity, name-calling, judgmental posturing. 